folks, one of the things we do on this channel is we not only bring you millionaires, but we bring you millionaires with different experiences. And on Mondays, we get Taylor from Life Goal Investments, who's a 10-year Wall Street veteran. Yes, on Wall Street. And uh, we got to ask him some questions. There's some craziness going on in the world. Uh, Taylor, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be on here as always. Thanks for having me. Oh, we appreciate you. The audience loves you. Uh, they they love our interaction. We don't always agree, right? You're a stock guy. I'm a real estate guy. Uh, we don't always agree, uh, which is- No, awesome. we laugh, we fight, we giggle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I want to ask you something. Uh, a lot of folks are learning about FDIC. They're learning about uninsured deposits. They're learning about the 250K amount. We've seen move, uh, money leaving small banks for big banks because they are perceived as being safer. But you're a Wall Street veteran. We've seen Charles Schwab in the news a lot. Uh, I want to talk about is Charles Schwab FDIC insured? Is Robinhood or any of these trading platforms FDIC insured? Are they? So Schwab specifically has gotten absolutely pounded through this whole thing. Um, and their executives actually, <clears throat> to their credit, they've they've backed up a truck and bought their own personal accounts up in a massive, massive way. Millions and millions of dollars from their yeah, I think it was six million bucks. I think I read on Saturday, six million bucks. Good, good for them. Put your money where your mouth is, big boy. Exactly right. Exactly right. No, so there is a different regulatory agency that that. So I want to be clear: they are not FDIC insured. They're not FDIC insured. No, so they are they are insured by CIPIC, um, Security Investor Protection Corporation, I believe is is the acronym there. Um, yeah, so so it's a, a different regulatory agency, and they are seen in a different light. So it's not like a banking deposit like you would have at you know Bank of America or whatever. And uh, there's some different rules and regulations that CIPIC looks at things in a different lens. So as I understand it, and I'm with you because you know this stuff much better than I, A, they are not FDIC insured. I want people to realize this. They are CIPIC insured. Second, it's actually the same number as I understand it. It's $250,000. Same like FDIC, CIPIC, different thing, all of that. But the, but all of you, most of you out there should just understand they are insured, not FDIC, something else. Is that correct? That's correct. And I think it's 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 interesting to look at it this way. Like, you know, most people who have money on Schwab's platform, on Robinhood's platform, whatever, the bulk of it's invested. And so I think it's interesting to understand like, okay, what happens if Schwab fails, just using them as the example, and I have a million dollars worth of investments in the stock market, bomb, whatever it is. So what's interesting to, to be very clear on there is that is your investment. You own that investment. It is just housed on Charles Schwab's platform. So what's happened historically is we have seen these brokerage platforms fail, you know, time and time again, or not time and time again. I don't mean to say that. They have like, failed. We have it, seen it, some failures. Correct. I'm not saying it's perpetual, this and that. But um, what's important there is what happens is CIPIC will then come in and organize a merger, largely like we see in, in some of the banking industry, right? So they will come in and say, okay, we're going to find someone else, an, an existing brokerage platform to take those accounts and house them for you. And yeah. so it will be pulled into Fidelity, into whatever it is, another big brokerage firm. And in right. the, the absolute extreme event that that cannot take place because there's bigger domino effects going on, a different thing happens. CIPIC will then custody all of the assets. So they will take over those accounts and they will liquidate them immediately at current market value. So if the s and is at 400, or, you know, at, at, you know, VOO, whatever's at four whatever the number is, they will liquidate that and ship the investors their investments uh, at that current day's market value. Yeah. There's a couple of things I think are very different for folks. If you take a bank FDIC and trading accounts, again, you own a million dollars in stock, Apple stock, for example, yep. very yep. liquid. What's different is when I walk into a bank and give them a million dollars, that million dollars you can think sits in a big pile. It's not really a pile, but think of it. And then it's the bank's job to lend that out. They don't Correct. separate my million dollars from all the other. It's one big pile. Correct. When I go to a trading account or I go on my phone and I buy a million bucks worth of Apple stock, it is Michael Zuber's stock. It is, it's, it's mine. It's right. not a big pile of any others. Is that a fair summary? That's that that's hundred percent correct. And I think the other thing that is important to understand is that, and this is painting with a broad stroke, there are some exceptions here, but those those investment firms, those brokerage firms that house those money, 
they do not go and then lend it out on the back end. No, exactly. So that's the important thing. Is like the banking issue is is being faced because they're lending money out the other end. They're investing fractional money in bonds reserve themselves. lending, right? Nine Correct. to one ratio. That's banks' job. That's how that's how banks custodian money and make their money to pay their bills. The trading account is just housing it. They're not lending on it, not using it as collateral, not doing. It's just housed there because we don't want to have stock certificates flying all over the place getting lost. Correct. You can, interestingly, though, I've, I've, can, I've though. heard you this can. from some folks lately. You can actually request a stock certificate, which is you can. which is awesome and old school. I don't have one. I need to get one just for you yeah. Know, you just need to get one. Yeah. I need to have one on the wall. Um, yeah, but no, super important to understand that that is you know it's not physical ownership because that's not the right word, but it is ownership by you yeah. of that particular investment. If things were to go sideways, and now I, I will give you the worst case scenario again. If Civic then is not able to organize a merger with another company to take over those brokerage accounts, and you do have to be liquidated, the problem here is, and this is, you know, this is not the worst problem in the world if that's because there are real, real, real issues if that plays out. Right. But the only problem that you'll experience there is that if it is a taxable account that, they, that you have on that platform, you will potentially experience taxable implications, capital gains on that when the money gets liquidated and returned to you. Yeah, this is this is very different than FDIC. Again, a lot of people are hearing FDIC the first time they're realizing or at least hearing that their deposits might not be safe, which is causing activity. I want to be very clear. The trading accounts are very different. You own it. it it's yours. It's not being levered up. It's not it, it, it's a very different game, but it's also not FDIC insured. It's just another organization. And another interesting thing to point out here is, is that some of these brokerage firms also have banking arms. Sure. And that's kind of a different situation. You go back to the same debacle that's facing the banking world at large right now can take place at these brokerage accounts with a separate entity banking arm that they have. Mm -hmm. It's a, again, though, it's you can almost think of it as a different company, right? Co if correct. the banking yes, arm yes. It had a hit, it would be cut off. It's segregated and different. Areas. Yes. But again, so, folks, so like yeah. for, for, for this reason, like I do all of my personal trading investing. I, I don't like to be called a trader. I'm an investor, not a trader. So let me draw that very yeah. clear. I do <laughs> yeah. all of there my is a difference. <laughs> yes, very much so. Um, I do all of my investment on Charles Schwab's platform. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I, I have no reason to say Charles Schwab versus Fidelity, whatever it is. No, I it's just that no I'm old. It's just, it was one of the first ones. I'm old and never got a second account. That's why. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, and with that, I have zero concern that, that my, yeah. my money is good there. I, I've not pulled it. I will not pull it there. Um, I, no concern. No, no concern. No, I've had, yeah, no concern. At the end of the day, folks, your trading accounts are not FDIC insured, but they are insured for the same number. And I would tell you they're custodian and no leverage. And I feel great with my stuff there. If I had a million bucks at a small regional bank, let me tell you, it wouldn't be there today, right? If I had a million dollars, but if I have a million bucks at Charles Schwab, I'm not concerned about it. It's very different. Very, 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 very different. So Taylor, you put out a lot totally of stuff great. and I actually saw this on your Instagram page. Where should people go if they want to watch you talk about this? Yep. Instagram and TikTok is where we're at. We're at Life Goal Investments, and this is the kind of stuff we do. So yep. thank Folks, you, Michael. Make sure you put an S on investments. There are these fake accounts and trolls out there. So again, Life Goal Investments. Thanks. And if you do go there, tell me you came from one rental at a time. Thanks, bud.